All right, we'll start with the basic example just to get us used to power series notation, right? Um, since we're dealing with these, these infinite series, right, infinitely many terms, we like summation notation like we've been using when we're dealing with series um, in general. And we want to write out first few terms, let's say five terms maybe for each one, right? So as usual for a series, we just put in each value of n, right? Starting at 0, n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you add them up. And as I mentioned in the last video, we take the convention that x to the 0 is identically 1, even though 0 to the 0 is not defined. We have 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x4. And of course, that's going to keep going from there. Uh, actually, this one, we, we, know, we know what to do with this one, right? We actually can say quite a bit about this. It's just a geometric series, right? We have x instead of r, but it's just a geometric series. r is equal to x. So we actually know what this one adds up to. We've done this already, right? This is 1 over 1 minus x. for the absolute value of x less than 1. Right? So that actually kind of gives us a formula, actually gives us the domain too. Right? I mean, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but let's, let's point that out. Hey, what is the domain? The domain for this thing is minus 1 to 1. All right. Not quite what we're trying to do here, but it's an interesting observation, so why not make it? Let's go on to the next one. Ah n equals 0. That doesn't make any sense. This one better start at n equals 1. All right? Can't divide by 0. So we start at n equal to 1. Start plugging in values for n. So if n is equal to 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 minus 1 squared. So first term is positive. So we have x plus 1 to the 1. Divide by 1. So we'll just write that as x plus 1 minus, right? Go to n equals 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, that's odd, we get the minus sign, right? We get alternating signs, we're sort of used to this by now. x plus 1 squared over 2. And you kind of start getting the idea of what's going on here. x plus 1 cubed over 3, x plus 1 to the 4 over 4, and so on, right? Not so bad. Down to the last one, looks a, little bit, uh, looks a little bit more complicated, but it really isn't. We're going to start at n equal to 0. We've got a sine factor again. We've got our powers of x. This time we've got a factorial, so we've got to account for that. Um, notice the 2n, right, means we only have even powers of x showing up in this particular power series. Um, also notice in, in 2 and 3, we didn't work just with powers of x, right? It's often going to be convenient to um, center a power series somewhere else, right? So the center is going to be kind of, well, this power here, when is it equal to zero? So this would be centered at minus one. This is centered at pi. And we expand everything in powers of x plus one or in powers of x minus pi in this case. And once you look at Taylor series, it's a little bit easier to understand why you bother to do that because it turns out that if you're using a Taylor polynomial to approximate a function, your approximation is best at the center. It gets worse as you move out. Um, and so often we like to kind of zoom in on a point that we're interested in. So this one here, and starting at 0, so we have a minus sign to begin with. So we have minus, well, it's just minus 1, okay? Because this is going to be x minus pi to the 0. That's 0 factorial. 0 factorial is equal to 1, right? We've seen that. Okay, so minus 1 plus, so now it's going to be x minus pi, um, so we're on n equal to 1, right? So squared, 2 times 1, divide by 2 factorial. There we go. And minus x minus pi to the 4, 4 factorial plus x minus pi to the 6, 6 factorial, and so on. 